It is time for your midweek edition of our coronavirus virtual town hall. We have a lot of your questions to answer. I'm Mary Ellis Demler and I'm Michael Wooten. Here's what's ahead for us today. What should we expect once the economy starts to reopen? Will there be a spike in cases? A top expert is going to share his thoughts. Plus, there's a meme going around about workers at grocery stores and big box retailers. Is it fact or fiction? And in terms of getting the coronavirus, are you safer outdoors? We have a lot to get to. Let's, let's start, though, as we always do, with the three things that you need to know right now. Number one, state leaders released results of a study of COVID-19 cases across New York State. It found that a majority of people in the hospital with it had not been working or traveling, and they were actually non-essential employees. Number two, we've talked quite a bit here at 530 about the primary election that happens next month. A federal judge has now ruled that the Democratic presidential primary question will be on the ballot, even though Joe Biden is now the only candidate left in that race. And number three, Erie County Executive Mark Polencar says there are some positive signs in the fight against coronavirus here. But as of today, the county still meets only three of the state's seven criteria to start phase one of reopening the economy. And that is where we're going to begin with your questions here tonight. A viewer asked us, it seems logical that as the economy reopens here and around the country, people leaving home more will equal a spike in cases and unfortunately deaths. Is that what your experts think will happen? Well, that is certainly the worry, and it's why states are trying to put safeguards in place to minimize the danger. Here's the answer to that question from Dr. Joseph Fair. He's a trained virologist and epidemiologist, and he's a medical contributor for NBC News, too. Well, we'll know in a couple of weeks, but, you know, I think... I think we're going to see at least a minor spike. Um, we are entering the summer months, especially in those areas of the country, Texas and Florida. And so if we if we go back and talk about a dip that we normally would see with cold and flu viruses and all of the science that was presented by the White House this week indicates that, you know, COVID-19, the, the virus that causes it, will behave similarly in the summer. We should see less cases in those summer, you know, hot and humid months. Um, and, and we should see just kind of that natural dip and then we'll probably see a resurgence in the fall. But I do expect for at least temporarily once these measures are relaxed that you'll see a, a spike in cases and you know it may continue well into the summer. I, the, the, we, this is a new virus to humans so we still don't know exactly how it's going to behave so we're making a lot of assumptions. Well, I know a lot of people are nervous about that, Michael. I mean, the thought of opening up the economy, you have to expect that there is going to be an increase in infection rates simply because people are out and about. Yeah, and it really will be a short period of time from now when we start to kind of get a sense on how bad that may get because, as we mentioned, so many states around the country are really opening up that valve, as Governor Cuomo likes to say. Nothing here in New York State, not at least until May 15th, but uh, we won't be too far behind, at least in parts of this state. It's going to be interesting to sit back and watch that happen. Yeah. Well, we got this question on our text line last night. Senator Rand Paul, who is a doctor, by the way, got the virus and is now protected from getting it again. Why are you hiding that? Well, we actually got a few people who messaged us about Senator Paul because he made headlines yesterday by refusing to wear a mask in the Capitol building. Yeah, you can see this NBC News article. He claimed that he has immunity because he previously tested positive for COVID-19. But that's not necessarily true. Experts think it's likely that after you get the virus, you will develop a level of immunity, but it's unclear how long that will last. There are also potentially different strains of the virus. New York State's health commissioner addressed the immunity question earlier today. Initially, the feeling was that one has antibodies, they should be protected. But we, we continue to learn more about this virus every day. And that's one of the things we're going to learn more about is the protection from uh, when you have antibodies and what that means. And also for how long uh, that protection would last uh, um, if one is protected from that. So it, it is a great question and it's hard to give you an answer at this point right now because there's still more research to do. 
Yeah, we included this today, number one, because a bunch of people messaged us about it. This was very big on social media and online because Senator Paul um, kind of put this out there. But the science is very clear right now that we don't know the answer to this. Everyone has their fingers crossed that you get a very strong level of immunity and that it's going to last for a long time. But we just don't have that proof yet. And if that's one thing we've heard consistently, at least over the past month, it's that we don't know as much as we'd like to about this virus and some of the things that they initially thought were true in the very beginning, say back in February and March, they're finding now are not true necessarily. Yeah, so things that's, change. That's the unfortunate thing because obviously, you know, Senator Paul has the attention of a, a lot of people. He's a senator yeah. and he's very vocal and it almost gives the appearance that it's starting to look like the virus and all the issues around it are getting really political. But yeah. that's why it's important that people really pay attention. You know, watch any and all news sources all day long, and then you'll start to hear the consistency. The minute you stop listening, that's really when you get into trouble, yeah. you know, when it comes to discerning the truth. Sometimes things can change. Look at masks. Yeah. The CDC right. was telling us you don't need to wear a mask yeah. if you're not showing symptoms, and that changed. Absolutely. Um, speaking of social media, a lot of the things um, that people are sharing with us, they're seeing online on Facebook and Twitter and asking us if they're true. Uh, someone actually sent me this screenshot yesterday. This has gone viral. It claims that among the more than 3 million workers at Walmart, Amazon, Kroger, Target, and Costco that quote, all of these companies have not had any reported cases in the news. This further says that none of these companies have closed stores. Both of those are categorically false. Hmm. In fact, take a look at a video of a Walmart in Quincy, Massachusetts that is closed. One employee there died and almost a dozen others tested positive for COVID-19. Three other stores in Massachusetts have also closed in recent weeks. One of the Walmarts had 81 workers infected. Yeah, that is just in one state. There are also store closures of all these types of stores all across the country. Uh, a local health department forced a store to close near Denver, Colorado. Our sister station in Louisville, Kentucky reported on employees testing positive at 11 different Kroger stores uh, in that area. Kroger is the, uh, the grocery store chain. Right, and you can go to Google and find dozens and dozens of stories all over the country of workers at grocery and big box stores testing positive, and some sadly are dying. So this meme going around social media is false. In some cases, Facebook has been able to block it, saying that it's false information and checked out by independent fact checkers. So again, this goes to People, first of all, using Facebook as a major source for information. <laughs> it's never been more obvious, Michael, how dangerous, flat out dangerous it is to get your information there. Yeah, and even though Facebook flagged that particular post as fake information, um, some other people sharing it, it hasn't called up yet. So you might yeah. even see that on your feed tonight and know that that's one of them that's not true. Yeah, it's the definition of it going viral. Yeah. Alrighty, well, let's get to another viewer question. This one came to me on social media. Someone said, no one seems to be talking about how outdoor venues and activities are safer than crowds indoors. The key here is that you can get the virus outdoors. We all know that. That's why we still have to practice safety measures when we're even just taking a walk. Uh, we asked Dr. John Fadima, the chief medical officer with Lattice Medical Care, what our viewers should know about indoors versus outdoors. When we cough, sneeze, or even talk, we're actually, for those of us who have the virus, are actually generating a cloud of respiratory particles that contain the virus. So in a closed room, that cloud is around us uh, suspended in the air. And depending on the circulation of that air, that cloud can stay suspended with viral particles in it for an hour, sometimes even longer, before it settles down onto the surface or onto the floor. Now, when we're outdoors, the wind, the exposure to the environment, to the elements out there, disperses that cloud much more effectively than, say, in a closed room. To your point, even though we're outside and there's less of a concentration of the virus around us because of the outside environment, there's, n there's always the opportunity that we can potentially still acquire the, the, the virus by virtue of an exposure to uh, inhaled respiratory particles. That's why the recommendations are still out there that we maintain social distancing, 
that we wear masks when we're outside. Yeah, okay, that was not the answer I wanted to hear, Michael. <laughs> One of my favorite things to do in the summer is to go to those outdoor concerts. I love to go to our park specifically, but you know, it's just a crush of human beings together. So it really does make sense that whether you're indoors or outdoors, now that we understand how this virus moves, you know, that doesn't make us safer. Yeah, it is interesting because I've seen some people posting um, on social media, again, the, the red flag there, um, saying that they that, that doctors believe it's transferred easier outside. And that's not true either. As the doctor was explaining there, when you're inside and there's not wind blowing around, it can hang in the air longer. But I think the takeaway here is whether you're inside, whether you're outside, if you're close to somebody, mm -hmm. you can get the virus. That's it. Well, we have heard multiple times from a viewer named Barb. Now, last week she wrote this. I've now had two relatives have cars that will not start because they just sat there for weeks and weeks. Can you please remind everyone that they need to be mindful of this? Barb, you are such a good Samaritan and <laughs> Michael got this response for you. So yeah, you bring up a great point and we've been meaning to touch on this for quite a while because so many of our cars are just sitting in parking lots, driveways, or garages. And that can cause a lot of problems with tire pressure dropping, your battery slowly being drained, and your brakes getting a little rusty. Your calipers and your rotors are steel, so they're gonna rust just sitting there. First thing people notice when they get in and they go to move a grinding noise. That typically takes care of itself. Mechanic Brent Allen says just tap the brakes a few times and the rust and noise will go away. The bigger issue might be your car not starting at all. In April, Western New York AAA offices saw a 43% increase in dead battery calls. So that shows you that a lot of people are going out to the driveway and realizing, wow, we haven't been driving much. Now I'm having a battery issue with my vehicle. So the best thing to do is to take the car for a ride. You know, the weekend's coming up, first weekend in May, take a ride out to the country, take a ride around the block, whatever it may be, but you need to drive the vehicle to get juiced to the battery. And lastly, a sitting car can get a musty smell from mold growth in your cabin air filter. Those should be changed at least once a year and sometimes a whole lot sooner if you wind up with unwelcome guests, rodents. They're looking for warmth and homes. And so air filter boxes, vents, up in the engine bay, they tend to make nests. And so that can happen if you smell a weird smell in your car, more than likely it's a critter in there. With so much car care maintenance off our radar right now, we could see problems pile up once the pandemic restrictions are lifted. AAA is expecting when this all ends, who knows when that will be, but that we do expect an influx in calls. One for car repair services because people will realize, wow, I left my car sitting here and now I have these issues with it. And two, for those roadside assistance calls because people will start to drive and realize, wow, you know, there's an issue with my vehicle and they'll break down on the side of the road. A lot of people have had those battery issues. I've heard from them and Barb has emailed me multiple times. So we got around to telling people that. Yeah, you know, and I'm feeling kind of a oneness with my vehicle because I feel like my own personal calipers and rotors are also rusting and I am close to not being able to start yeah. up anymore just from being so so much more sedentary than normal. So no doubt. there's a lesson for us all in that. <laughs> all right.